So this isn't going to be a nutrition or health video. Um, today I actually want to talk about something that might make people mad, uh, might ruffle some feathers, but I hope that it makes some people think. Um, today I want to talk about God and faith. And this video is really aimed towards, you know, what Christians get wrong and what non-Christians get wrong. I do want to say that this segment that I am now filming is in search of the truth. I want this channel to not only be about health, physical health, but spiritual health as well. So this new segment is called Unapologetic, and that's where I'm unapologetically searching for the truth, the truth in Christ, the truth in our physical health and our spiritual health. So I hope you follow along. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, leave a comment down below um, if you are a follower of Christ. Leave a comment if you're not a follower of Christ. I'd love to hear your story as well. I also worked out before, so hopefully I look, I look big so you guys think that you want to listen to a muscular, I mean, maybe I'm not muscular, a muscular dude talking about God, proclaiming to the world that I am a follower of Christ um, but with that being said, today's Monday that I'm filming this, so happy Father's Day, uh, happy late Father's Day to all the dads out there. Um, I myself, if you followed this channel or have followed me at all, you know that I am soon to be a father um, here in the next few weeks. So, you know, the last few years, um, I've really grown into faith and um, just to share my story it's not a unique story but it's unique to me and it's and it's my story but when I grew up um, my parents very much taught me about God and having faith in Jesus as my Lord and Savior when I was a kid I, I definitely accepted Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior but I don't think when I was a kid I really understood the implications um, or heaven and hell or really had a good grasp of sin, um, hypocrisy, and what I was called to do as a follower of Christ. And you know, as I grew up and I went to college, I kind of I kind of wavered in my faith and questioned my faith a lot um, to the point where I don't want to say I rejected Christianity or rejected Jesus, but I definitely questioned you know what the truth was and and what it all meant. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of years ago where I felt like I was at my lowest point. You know, during COVID, I had just suffered, you know, a really hard breakup. I was unsure about my career, what my future would look like, um, to the point where I even told my mom that, you know, I don't think I'm someone who's going to get married. I think I'm just going to stay single and try and figure out my life, which in some aspects, that's not the worst thing in the world to try to figure your life out, but um, that was something that really broke my heart was when I had to tell my, my mom that, you know, it looked like you weren't gonna have a daughter-in-law, my dad too, um, maybe even my sister, a sister-in-law, and, you know, maybe I wouldn't have a family or have kids, and that was really a really tough pill for me to swallow at the time. It wasn't until then I really had an encounter with Christ where Something in, my, something in my heart, something in my brain clicked and it said that, you know, I need, to, I need to renew my faith. I need to look to God. I need to look to Jesus and put my, my anxieties, my worries, my fears, and put it into, into, his, you know, into his arms and let him handle it. And that's when I started to take up prayer again. I began to open up the Bible and, you know, something incredible happened. I met my wife and I started a new career as a paramedic. And it's been very rewarding. I've met amazing people. Um, I make decent money. I have good benefits. I own a home. Um, you know, I was able to get engaged. Now I'm, now I'm married and I have a kid on the way. And to look back, you know, just a few years ago when I had almost had no idea when I would look to my future, it was dark, it was bleak, I had nothing. 
you know, I wasn't, I almost swore off getting married to now I am married and have a kid on the way. And to me, um, that was the greatest blessing. And that was kind of the encounter with Christ I had because leading up to meeting my wife, I had prayed and I had asked God to, you know, to lead me and to, you know, to, to give me a wife. And it wasn't until then I learned of, you know, repenting my sins and what that truly meant and to have genuine faith in Christ. Um, and that's one of the first things that I want to talk about that as believers that we get wrong is um, a genuine faith in Christ. And that doesn't mean just sinning and then asking for forgiveness and then sinning again, the same sin, and asking for forgiveness, which you will do. I mean, I'm not saying that won't happen, but sinning in the sense that you know you can just ask for forgiveness and God sweeps it under the rug. But I would caution you that that's not, that's not the way. For true repentance is recognizing your sin and admitting that sin to God, asking for your forgiveness, and then correcting that behavior. All right? A Christian with genuine faith has a habit problem, not thinking that it's okay to sin. And that leads me into the next part that Christians get wrong, and that is saying that sin is okay. There's a lot of things that happen in this world, that happen in this country, in America, that Christians nowadays will say, that's fine, I'm told not to judge. That's a partial truth. You are called, you are called not to judge. Because when the woman who was committing adultery was brought to Jesus by those men, and those men said to Jesus, like, this woman has committed adultery. Should we not stone her? And Jesus is drawing in the sand, and he says to them, let he who is without sin throw the first stone. That's because we were all sinners. All right? But the problem that I see with Christians today is that you're okay with sin. And, you know, we are part of this culture that is what they call woke. And we're supposed to be accepting of behaviors that are what Jesus himself has called sinful. And I would caution you to ex be accepting of that. And two things can be true, okay? We can hate sin and reject sin. We can also love the sinner. We can love the person because every person was created the image of God. Every person has innate value. So while sexual immorality may be a sin, that doesn't mean you reject your neighbor because they commit that sin. If you truly love somebody, you would let them know that, hey, I see this behavior. I would caution you against that behavior because I care about you. And I say this from a point of empathy because I myself am a sinner. And I would hope that as my neighbor, you would call me on my sin to help make me a better person. Because to love thy neighbor, Jesus said the two most important commandments is to love God with your, all your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And to truly love someone is to call them on their behavior that is sinful or that is not good for them. And I know non-believers, that's where you would come in and say that Christians are hypocrites. Because as I just mentioned, we are all sinners. However, Christians, that is where you come in as empathizers. Because we are all sinners as I've previously mentioned twice now. But to allow your neighbor to sin and to not say, hey, what you're doing, God does not want for you, as he has stated, as Jesus has stated, as I would hope that you would do for me as my neighbor and as someone that claims to love me. A lot of people nowadays claim that to be tolerant and to be loving, yet when we let our neighbors do things that are harmful to themselves and to others, that is not love, okay? That is deceit. And that is the very nature of Satan. And I see it more and more in the media. I see it more and more in our youth that we have severely lost our way in what truly loving one another is. Now, as non-believers, I would ask you genuinely why you don't follow Christ as someone who himself 
struggle with his own faith? What is it that you find about Jesus or following Christ that is wrong? And what I would challenge you on is to read the Gospels. And I know. Here we go, another Christian, another supposed follower of Christ, telling me to read about Jesus, to read the Gospels. As Craig Keener writes in his book, Crystal Biography, he examines the Gospels. And the overall consensus among theologians and scholars is that the Gospels are, in fact, ancient biographies. That Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote about Christ. And what's interesting is that they write in living memory of Christ, as they had eyewitness testimony or were around those or knew those that had eyewitness testimony while still in the living memory of Jesus. So my challenge to you as a non-believer is to read the Gospels and to understand what you're reading, the literary style, which is an ancient biography, historical narrative, and to read about Jesus' sin, sinless, not sinful, that's completely wrong, sinless life, how he treated others and his teachings, most notably the, serm, the Sermon on the Mount. Because non-believers, it's easy for you to say that you reject Christ. But it's more important for you to have a reason why you reject Christ. Because I believe at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, we will, we will be judged. And it took me up until earlier this year to understand what that truly meant. You know, when you go before God or go before Jesus, and they were to ask you, you know, why do you deserve to go into heaven? And it took me a long time to really understand that the answer is, I don't belong, I don't deserve to go to heaven. But I know that I put my faith in Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, who God sent down to die for our sins. And He did so, he, forgiving His enemies while going through the most painful, humiliating moment in any human being's life in the history of mankind. To be flogged, to be spit on, to be mocked, to be ridiculed, persecuted, by those he had helped, by those he had loved, and then nailed on a cross to die, only for his story not to be over and to be risen three days later, to prove that he in fact is the Son of God. And the important thing with that is, if you say there's no way for anyone to rise from the dead, and I agree with you, it's ludicrous. However, that's why Jesus is the Son of God, God Himself. He is one with God. He is equal to God. And if you're a Christian and you and you and you don't believe that, then I think you really need to go back and read the Gospels and read what Jesus said and see what he claimed. For it's written that Jesus is equal to God. For who is able to forgive sin but God? And then I want you to read who also forgave sin, which was Jesus. Because before Abraham, Jesus said, I am. When Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to over 500 people in 40 days. That's a lot of eyewitness testimony. But I challenge you to believe for yourself and to read the Gospels for yourself and make that decision if you want to live for Christ. Because it was a decision that I essentially made twice. Once when I was a kid, not fully understanding what that meant, and now as an adult, to understanding more. That when I am before God on the day of judgment, do I deserve heaven? And I would say no. But I would say, you did send your son, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, who I put my full faith in, who died for my sins. I live every day for the will of God. But I also come to you today in this video as a, fl as a flawed person, as someone who is a sinner, as someone who knows that he needs to do better, especially with a family on the way. And I hope to raise my kids to know and understand and love God and to put their full faith in Him as well. And to the non-believers, I am genuinely cur curious why you are a non-believer. And I'm not asking that in a way to mock you, to shame you, I am genuinely curious, a conversation I would love to have. 
and I filmed this video today in my basement, my unfinished basement, in the dark, with just a ring light and a camera. In the background, as you can see, my squat rack. I'm currently in my gym, my homemade gym down here. It's cold down here, it's a humble place, so I figured why not make a video here. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'm hoping to drop these types of videos weekly. But today I just want to talk about kind of what things we get wrong as Christians and, and things non-Christians get wrong, you know, with thinking that Christians um, themselves are hypocrites when they call others on sin, but don't seem to call themselves on sin. But I think, trust me, true Christians, true followers of Christ are repenting daily for their sins, or at least they should be. Because I know that's something that I include in my prayer every day. Because though I'm not perfect, I never will be. And I recognize that I live to a different standard than non-believers. So it's hard to hold you to the same standard. And that's the struggle, is that I'm called to do so. Because we all, I, I want everyone to make it to heaven. Everyone that I talk to, I want them to make it to heaven. All the people, all the friends I've made, I want them all to make it to heaven. Because... I want to live eternally with my wife, my family, and my friends with God in his kingdom. That's all I got for today. Um, I'm interested to see if there's anything else I should talk about in the coming future with these videos, so let me know. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.